right. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining the Automo Automotive Linux Summit Europe. Uh, our next talk will be Ishi-san from Panasonic Automotive Systems. Um, welcome, Ishi-san. Um, and uh, yeah, enjoy the talk, debugging tools and techniques for virtualized automotive systems. Take it away. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, hello everyone. Thank you for joining this session. My name is Hiroyuki Ishii. I'm working at Panasonic and also a, being a member of the Azure project. Today, I will talk about debugging tools and techniques for virtualized automotive systems. Um, firstly, I'd like to apologize for a minor change in my talk's title. I have uh, removed the containerization part from today's topic for making my talk fit within that time frame. And I have already uploaded the, this slide to Sketch so you can download it anytime if interested. So here's the agenda for today's topic. Uh, first, I will provide a brief introduction. Next, we quickly uh, explore various debugging tools useful for virtualized systems. Then we'll deep dive into a practical example where we'll analyze the vHostNet, which is a typical component in virtualized environment. Finally, I love at that talk. Now let's get started with the introduction. So let me introduce myself again. My name is Hiroyuki Ishii. I have been working at Panasonic Automotive Systems for more than 15 years and uh, have experience in Linux-based software development for Invico infotainment products and also uh, cockpit domain controller products. And my primary areas of expertise are Linux kernel, um, performance engineering, virtualization and cloud native technologies. And in 2021, I joined the Azure project where I served on the steering committee and system architect and also contributing in various roles such as virtualization expert. So let's take a look at some background trends in automotive software. In recent years, there are various requirements arising related to software-defined vehicles, such as high-performance computing, hardware scalability, and workload distribution, mixed criticality, and many more. And in response to this need, there has been a growing demand and initiatives for virtualization as a key technology for each of these requirements. For example, uh, Azure project has been actively worked on virtual, virtual machine-based demo integration using KVM to address these needs. And other projects such as SOFI, Eclipse SDV, and Android Automotive are also actively contributing the virtualization solutions for automotive use cases. However, there are big challenges associated with the complexity of virtualized systems. These include complex integration between uh, uh, complex interactions between host and guest components, uh, increased system footprint or uh, complicated integration, and limited capabilities and visibility within guest environments. As a result, uh, debugging and performance engineering becomes increasingly difficult, and complications arise in understanding the overall system behavior. And to address these challenges, there is a, a growing need for specialized tools and techniques for virtualized systems. All right, so let's proceed to the next section. In this section, we'll uh, review various tools uh, available for um, virtualized systems, including Perf, uh, Trace Command, BCC, Frame Graph, and Debug InfoD. These tools can help you analyzing, debugging, and optimizing your virtualized systems. So the first tool is Perf, uh, which is powerful 
profiling and tracing tool for Linux systems, as many of you may already know. Perf acts as a front end for various tracing technologies in Linux, such as Perf events, ftrace, and kprobes. And it's developed within the Linux kernel source tree, which ensures it's, it is uh, stable and reliable at certain level. However, the, this also means that Perf has a strong dependency on the kernel version, which may impact its compatibility across systems. And additionally, uh, some hardware events supported by Perf are platform dependent, which may limit its usability in certain cases, for example, on ARM platform. The next tool is Trace Command, which is the front end tool for F-Trace and developed by Steven Lodestead. Uh, Trace Command provides features quite similar to Perf, but with a simpler and more user-friendly interface, in my opinion. And one notable thing is that some of recent updates in Trace Command is designed for embedded and virtual use cases, including Trace Command Agent or, and uh, Trace Command Listen. But unfortunately, I haven't been able to test these uh, features this time, but yeah, I plan to turn them out soon. And next is BCC, uh, which is a BPF-based tracing tool designed for performance analysis and debugging. BCC offers a rich set of features, including Python support and various practical example scripts and the ability to uh, simplify the creation of the custom tools built upon it. However, the, there are also some drawbacks to using PCC, uh, including its relatively large dependency, for example, on LLVM and Python, which may not be ideal for some embedded use cases. Additionally, BCC has limited support for the ARM platform. Unfortunately, we were unable to use some of good scripts in BCC, such as uh, KVM exit and many more at this time due to uh, platform dependencies. And next is FrameGraph or FrameGraph.pl, which is the virtualization tool for uh, pa uh, performance data samples. Uh, this tool helps users understand the workload overview and under, uh, identifying bottlenecks within the system as shown in this picture. And the last tool is Debug InfoD, uh, which is a bit different type of tool than the, the other I mentioned. Uh, it's a host demo for handling and managing Debug Info files. Debug Info D is developed as a part of the FU Tools project, and it's compatible with um, numerous popular debugging tools, including GDB, Perf, uh, Trace Command, BCC, and many others. Uh, Debug Info D is especially uh, beneficial for uh, embedded systems, I think, as it allows for offloading uh, debug info files from the target system, which solves uh, storage limitations. And additionally, uh, Debug Info D resolves uh, past conflicts of uh, debug info files within virtualized systems. Mm -hmm. And a um, big advantage of Debug Info D is its seamless integration with the Yoke build system, which enables you to utilize it with a single command. All right, so let's deep dive into uh, practical examples using these tools. The goal of this section is to gain knowledge of debugging tools usage and technologies in, I uh, know, techniques in a virtual environment through uh, pa uh, practical examples. And as the example, we'll investigate the behavior of the vhostnet, uh, which is an acceleration for standard butternet by uh, comparison with the standard one. 
Then we'll uh, explore how and why it can improve uh, performance uh, as well as uh, any uh, potential side effects that could, e that could exist. Now, um, let's look at the difference overview between uh, standard battery net and uh, Brihos net. The key difference lies in the implementation of the uh, battery net device emission. When uh, Brihos net is enabled, the emulation shifts from the QMU user space to the dedicated uh, Brihos net uh, kernel thread. This change can result in uh, improved uh, performance and reduced overhead. But I will not uh, go into too much detail here, as we'll analyze it by tools later in this section. Okay, so before we dive into the analysis, let's quickly go over the preconditions. Uh, first, I'm using the uh, AGL KVM demo platform, uh, which is built from the AGL UCB master branch as a base image. And I have installed uh, additional tools, including uh, Behost Net support and IPAF3, uh, SSH, and various debugging tools to the base image. Um, if you need for more details, uh, please refer to the uh, appendix of this slide with downloading it. And, and my test environment is running on Azure reference hardware here, uh, which has Renesas Alka HC SOC with eight physical CPU cores. And it hosts a single guest VM uh, using QMU with uh, set SMP equal four, which means that uh, guest VM has four virtual uh, CPU cores. And during the analysis, I'm uh, generating the network traffic between the host environment and guest environment by IPAF3 to uh, load the network virtualization systems. And to ensure the uh, accurate result, uh, I have halted all other workloads prior to the investigation. And uh, I will be comparing the metrics and traces between uh, VHostNet and the standard BiteWire in other words, with and without this uh, Behost net support by utilizing tools such as perf, uh, trace command, and BCC. So let's begin with the simple bitrate measurement using IPAF3. With standard battery O, the bitrate was 1.66 gigabit per sec, while with uh, Behost net, it reaches uh, 3.26. This shows that uh, VHOS net is about two times faster than the standard battery net, which clearly highlighting the benefits of using battery net. No, no, VHOS net. And now uh, let's start deep analysis with uh, KVM event statics using the path start. Please note that we are limiting the number of uh, packets here, here, to 100 megas uh, to provide the same load to the different environments. We can see uh, various events recorded here, but key observation here are the significant uh, redu reduction in the WFX events. Uh, which is a CPU standby uh, event for on the ARM platform, and also uh, uh, BCPU wake up event occurrence are same on guest BCPUs. From this, we can guess that this may have some relation to the performance uh, improvement in BIOS Net. Next, uh, let's focus on the VM exit events using uh, PATH KVM stat. Interestingly, uh, while we've 
also uh, observe the degrees of uh, WX events, um, events again, but VM exit events themselves have actually increasing in VHostNet, mainly due to the uh, data about the data about event and IRQ event. The common belief is that a higher number of the VM exit events leads to poorer uh, performance in virtual systems, but this may not be always true. And here we can guess that WFX uh, could be more costly than other VM exit events. Now let's change the approach for um, focusing on the, uh, monitoring the I.O. operations on part I.O. using uh, part of start. It's from PCC. Now, uh, note that uh, we have to run this command from the uh, guest side instead of the host side. The buffer length handled by uh, Bartio net is shown here, here and here, and uh, left side is in buffer length and right, right side is out buffer length. And as a result, we can observe that the traffic handled by Bartio net is almost consi consistent between standard Bartio and VHOS net which implies the behavior of guest size should not be changed at least on the uh, interface level. And next, uh, let's try to take uh, performance sampling across host and guest using a uh, VM record. Before starting, it's necessary to mount the guest file system from the host using SSHFS like this. Afterward, uh, we can pass the mount point to the path command like this. So this showed the result of uh, path KVM record in a standard virtual environment. Uh, by using the show CPU utilization option, uh, you can visualize the, whether the workload belongs to the host or the guest, such as the these rows, uh, no, no, these rows are guest side and these rows are host side. For example, the top line of this indicates that the guest kernel function named uh, receive buff uh, consumes about 20% of CPU in guest context. And please note that the process name starting with a colon like this uh, represent child threats of another process. In this case, all of them are uh, a virtual CPU, vCPU thread of uh, QMU process. From this, we can observe that two out of four vCPUs are working in this use case. As shown here, um, you can analyze high load functions in detail across both host and guest at once. However, this function level of detail might be too much in this analysis. So let's summarize the previous result using a path KVM report sort option. This is showing the result summarized by processes uh, in this view, you may gain better understanding than before. However, um, it's important to note that the overhead metrics in this view include uh, idle functions. Thus, uh, you need to identify the idle functions and, and manually exclude from, uh, them from uh, each process. The result after exclusion uh, shown at the bottom. As you can see, the overall CPU consumption has significantly uh, decreased in the VHostNet environment on each processes. This clearly in indicates the efficiency of VHostNet. 
Okay, then let us try to uh, look at function level workload again using frame graph. The basic usage of frame graph is outlined here. If you're interested in, please take a look at it later. And here we present some tips and tricks for virtual systems. First, you can record uh, samples on both the host and the guest systems at once using SSH command like this. Second, uh, you can merge the two outputs into a single SVC file like this. This makes it easier to compare the analyze the data. But please note that uh, the, these procedures are designed for convenience and may not be strictly correct. And uh, these are the results. Uh, although the font might be small, uh, we'll zoom into each part later. Frame graph allows you to analyze system-wide stack traces. In other words, the function call hierarchy. The horizontal axis, this axis, uh, represents the total duration of the function across all samples. And the stacks are displayed from uh, bottom to top with the bottommost element indicating the process name, process name here, yeah, too small. And this uh, virtualization, uh, this visualization uh, makes it easy to understand the performance bottleneck and its flow of execution at once. Now let's take a look at each part. First, a uh, guest side has a nearly similar shape of workload between host uh, standard virtual and vhostnet. As same, uh, IPATH 3 on host has quite similar workload. Uh, regarding uh, swapper case rate on the host, the workload appears somewhat similar, but the idle time is slightly longer than on in the uh, vhostnet environment. And finally, we can observe that uh, primary difference lies in uh, QMU and vhost case rate on host. We can also see that the same uh, function load, which is target user, uh, appears in different contexts such as QMU and vhostnet, which clearly visualizes the shift of network device emulation from QMU to vhost case rate. Additionally, we can identify an important difference here, which is the usage of the system calls. In the case of standard battle as QMU is a user process, it must utilize system calls, uh, specifically a uh, right way, to invoke kernel kind of functions like target user. In contrast, in case of uh, battle net, there's no need to uh, for system calls because uh, vhost uh, is a uh, kernel thread. And this results in the difference in overhead. In the case of standard battle we can see that many uh, intermediate uh, function calls, uh, functions are being called until reaching to the uh, target user. This leads to the loss of CPU time as shown by the time difference between uh, this bottommost uh, caller function and the actual load function. And in conclusion, we can say that QMU generates significant overhead uh, during network packet transfer, primarily due, due to use of system calls. All right, so let's move on the final uh, exercise. We will try to trace uh, interactions uh, between the host and the guest using trace command record to effectively analyze the context switches between the host and the guest. I recommend tracing both KVM and SCAT events at once like this. Additionally, um, k-proofs can be utilized to trace almost all kernel functions. 
And this is an example of uh, creating and tracing Keprov event for target user function. And here is the result of such tracing in uh, standard Python. I know that this may uh, look too complicated, so let me explain it step by step. Um, first, uh, let's focus on that uh, two CPU cores are working here. Uh, one is the uh, guest vCPU, and one is the QMU's main thread, uh, which is also known as IO thread. Then let's uh, examine, examine the uh, sequence. Uh, the starting point of the sequence is this uh, MMIO event uh, initiated by the guest vCPU. Uh, this prompts the host, in other words, uh, uh, emulator of the uh, network device to transfer the next packet. As a result, the QMU IO thread uh, awakens. Afterward, the guest vCPU enters the sweep set using WFX, and it awaits the next event, which is the compression of the uh, network transfer. Then the uh, QMU IO thread invokes target user function. Next, uh, QMU handles the IOQ event to inform the compression uh, network transfer for the guest. And then the guest vCPU gets woke up again from the sleep state. And finally, the next MMIO event is invoked, uh, which means the end of a uh, single se sequence. So let's evaluate the durations here. The total duration during one sequence is uh, in standard battery was uh, 411 microseconds. <laughs> and we can infer that the root cause of this duration is likely due to the uh, VCPU's uh, sleep and wake up, as, as well as the use of system calls. And finally, the... No. Okay, and sorry, uh, and in case of battle net, we can okay, correct. We can firstly uh, find that the sequence become uh, obviously shorter than standard battle. So let's take a look at the sequence as well. Uh, as you can see, it's essentially not so different with standard battle, but. There are uh, two notable differences, such as uh, there are the uh, uh, vhost case running and vCPU doesn't uh, invoke WX. And the total duration du during the one sequence is in vhost net environment become uh, 187 microseconds. So in conclusion, we have observed uh, over two times time efficiency in uh, uh, vhost net as seen in the sequence stress. And <coughs> sorry, and these results are highly consistent with the bitrate measurement observed using uh, IPAF3. Uh, essential reasons for this improvement would likely include the uh, removal of QMU user space, which utilizes system calls from the uh, critical path, and also the minimization of uh, VCPU sleep and wake up occurrences. Okay, so let me wrap up this talk. Uh, in summary, uh, during this presentation, we have uh, confirmed the value of VHostNet by the uh, behavior analysis using specialized tools for virtualized em environment. VHostNet is twice as fast as the standard virtual net with no significant uh, side effects observed, especially in terms of CPU utilization. Additionally, um, various methodolog methodologies and tools are uh, covered, covered in this talk. 
And I believe they can be applied to a wide range of uh, development scenarios for virtualized systems. And these include analyzing performance improvements and uh, regressions, as well as uh, debugging or uh, walking through virtualized systems. And next steps, I will uh, contribute materials to AGL, which likely includes uh, some debugging tools, as well as uh, vhostnet support. And I will also uh, explore some additional tools, such as uh, porting BCC script to AIQ64 architecture, or developing custom uh, tools using BCC, or trying trace command agent on BSU. And <coughs> also I will investigate on a uh, containerized environment and cloud environment. So that's uh, all of my today's my talk. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? If you, if you have questions, please wait for the microphone. Okay. So thank you again. All right. Thank you.